Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, uh, we'll be going over to Abuja where Dr. Uh, Abdul Kader Moazu joins us. He's the former team physician for the Super Eagles and the chairman of NFF Medical Committee. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Well, we have a unique situation in our hands. Uh, first and foremost, many will look towards uh, exercise, science, and athletics training as sports medicine, your field. And then we we'll look at our sports centers, several of those other areas where uh, NFF football activities go on regularly. And we don't see the kind of health facilities we should. Well, perhaps we should even start from all of those areas and get, to get your perspective on this matter. Is this something that the NFF has paid or had paid attention to previously, or are you still looking to improve the kind of health facilities we have in our various sports centers for a start? Thank you very much um, uh, for uh, wanting to speak to me about this important issue. Uh, for a long time, uh, both the Nigerian Football Federation and the body responsible for football league in this country have paid attention and made significant investment in ensuring that those who play football uh, have access to decent medical care and that they play football in a very safe uh, environment. They have access to emergency response and they are taken care of. Uh, so it's not true that the NFF has not done anything about it. Uh, probably apart from South Africa, there's no country in this continent that has invested and done so much to ensure that our athletes, particularly footballers, uh, receive medical attention uh, more than Nigeria. We have, uh, within the Nigerian Football uh, Federation Medical Committee, specific guidelines that require that each person playing football, whether for the national team or for any club in this country, undergoes an annual comprehensive medical assessment. We call it pre-participation medical assessment. And that involved detailed physical examination with particular emphasis and attention to musculoskeletal system and the heart. And then detailed investigations with a minimum of 12-lead electrocardiogram ECG. And we also ensure that referees and coaches undergo periodic medical assessment to have a baseline information about their health. We are the first country probably in the world that organized with that support of FIFA, an international football medicine course, and that was in 2009. Um, with the facilitation of the NFF and the LMC, the football uh, um, management company, we organized another international sports emergency football medicine course in 2014, where we brought all team doctors and medical personnel for the loop club to undergo a comprehensive hands-on course on emergency uh, football medicine. During that occasion, emergency medical bags that are distributed by FIFA containing all emergency medical equipment, including automated external defibrillators, were distributed to these club doctors. We also have guidelines where there are requirements for medical support before matches are played in all the stadia. At the national level, we have very good resources in sport medicine. We undertake periodic medical assessment every year or before any major tournament for our national athletes and for our officials. So we are doing a lot. Uh, and we are doing a lot because we have, as you know, many unpleasant uh, incidents of sudden cardiac death involving our athletes and our referees. Well, you, doctor, okay. you know, I was going to ask, uh, now that you have just reeled out some of this, given us a background of uh, what happens, uh, perhaps we should be asking the question if uh, you have uh, what they call a medical protocol uh, within the NFF. Yeah. 
Yes, we, we do, and that is just what I have tried to explain. We, we have a protocol for assessment, and we call it annual pre-competition medical assessment. And we actually adopted the FIFA standard, where athletes are comprehensively evaluated. We have worked with the league management company to establish a comprehensive policy for players. We have trained medical personnel of clubs, not only on emergency football medicine, but also on the basic aspect of sport medicine, keeping players safe, injury prevention, treatment of injuries, medical conditions, and so on and so forth. And we do that annually. We are also involved in educating coaches about uh, the basic issues of safety for players, about issues that have to do with their, with their own health, because we realize they work under a lot of stress, and they have to pay attention to their own health. They have to take greater responsibility for ensuring that they are healthy. Because they are human beings, and many of them have morbid conditions. Some are hypertensive, some are diabetics, and so on and so on. So if you appreciate the circumstances under which they walk, you should realize that it's important for them to be educated and reminded often about the need for them to pay attention to their health. I'm happy you just touched on the coaches. I was going to ask uh, a follow-up on that. But uh, considering the stress-related nature of their job, how often do the coaches uh, go through medical examinations? As often as possible. Uh, what you should, everybody should understand is that uh, in sport medicine, certain those responsible for providing medical support to athletes and officials are only able to do so when they have these athletes and officials, and that is periodic. So each time they come under our care, we try as a protocol, as a routine, to ensure that we know what their health conditions are. For coaches, uh, and I say this uh, with some pride, that we have followed the health status of especially the national coaches for many years. These are confidential issues that cannot be discussed publicly. And then we try to encourage them to take responsibility when they are not under our care. Because after the tournaments or camping, they go away. And they are not under the care of the sport medicine personnel anymore. But we are friends and colleagues. And we often remind them to be more careful and take responsibility for, for their health. You know, but Doc, I mean, athletes too, including the coaches, they could also get affected with... Uh, I think they say it's HCM while in the course of their sporting activity. I've seen persons who are engaging uh, in a sporting activity and then died. These are regular sports people. So what kind of symptoms should we be looking out for? I mean, do you, uh, I know you talked about the fact that you regularly tell them all of this, but in what kind of cases do you think this can happen when an athlete is performing or a coach and then unfortunately uh, experiences HCM? Well, I, I didn't hear the last word we said, but I listened to Dr. Babatunde answering your question about athletes slumping or collapsing on the pitch and dying. And I had his responses. But what I want to uh, explain is that the two scenarios of what had just happened to our very good friends and colleagues uh, and what happened on the pitch may not necessarily be the same. We have what we call sudden cardiac death affecting athletes. And it's unpredictable and uh, often doesn't give any warning sign. And that is why we pay special attention to screening them, focusing on prevention, and then enhancing our capacity to respond when that happens. Now, in cases of sudden cardiac death, athletes are physically very fit, uh, often without any evidence of any medical condition. Uh, and at the height of the activity, and we are aware of this as a nation, uh, prominent athletes have died. They just collapse and they die. And mostly it affects black uh, athletes or much more than Caucasians. And we have identified the causes. Many of them are issues that have to do with the structure of the heart. Uh, we call hypertrophic cardiomyopathy for whatever reasons. 
uh, the heart seems to enlarge and then cause the heart to fail. And they go into what we call fibrillation. Instead of the heart functioning as a regular pump, uh, it just goes into a bizarre type of weak uh, fibrillation and they collapse and die. And the other causes uh, have to do with the structure of the arteries and so on and so forth. It's extremely very difficult to predict. Uh, that is why we insist on doing very comprehensive cardiovascular uh, assessment, heart assessment. We do take very well detailed history. We ensure that we uh, do a standard 12-let ECG. When we are suspicious, we send them to cardiologists uh, to have a look to do additional investigations like echocardiogram. And if we are suspicious of them having conditions that can predispose them to sudden death, like Marfan syndrome, then we advise them uh, to be careful or we exclude them from participation. But the most important effort by everybody involved in football in the last couple of uh, years, FIFA CAF, is to see whether we can do more to prevent such. And uh, by educating the medical staff, by enhancing our capacity to respond. And that was the essence of those emergency football courses I, I spoke about. So uh, perhaps uh, now we should be asking the, you what's the difference between an annual physical and uh, a sports physical? Is there a difference between what you do for the athletes and uh, what you normally would do uh, with your everyday doctor?